Welcome to day 16. We begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts and minds today so that we may hear your voice and be given the courage to act upon it. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. On to a new chapter. We are on to the chapter 3, the love of God. So we're focusing on the third theological virtue. We spoke about faith, or I should say St. Alphonsus wrote about faith, and then we focused on hope, and now we are to charity, the love of God. And we begin. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, and with thy whole soul, and with thy whole mind. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Love of God is a divinely infused virtue that leads us to love the Lord our God as the sovereign good and purely for his own sake. The motive that prompts us to love God is his own boundless perfection, on account of which alone he deserves to be loved, even though we had no reward to hope for or no punishment to dread. He who loves God because he finds in him his own happiness has an interested, selfish love that really belongs to the virtue of hope and not to love. But he who loves God because for his own sake he deserves to be loved has the true and genuine love of friendship. The companions of King Louis of France met a woman one day who carried in one hand a burning torch and in the other a vessel of water. On being asked what these things signified, she replied, With this torch I would gladly burn heaven and with this water extinguish the fire of hell, in order that men might love God, not because of the reward of heaven or the punishment of hell, but simply and solely because he deserves to be loved. The perfect love of God, however, does not exclude the hope of heaven. We love God because he deserves to be loved, and we would love him even though we had no reward to expect for doing so. But knowing as we do that he will give us a reward and that he even desires us to hope for it, we must confidently expect it and strive to attain it. To long for heaven in order to possess God and love him more perfectly is a true and perfect love of God. For eternal glory is the perfection of this love. All perfection consists in the love of God. For love is the virtue that unites us most intimately with God. All the other virtues are of no account unless they are accompanied by love. On the other hand, love has all the other virtues in her train, according to the teaching of St. Paul. Charity is patient, is kind, charity envieth not, dealeth not perversely, is not puffed up, is not ambitious, seeketh not her own, is not provoked to anger, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, iniquity, but rejoiceth with truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. From 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 7. Love, concludes the apostle, is the fulfillment of the law. This induced St. Augustine to say, love, and then do what you wish. He who loves another is very careful to cause him no offense. On the contrary, he is eager to do what will afford him pleasure. In like manner, he who loves God above all things abhors an offense against him more than death itself, and strives as much as in him lies to please God. The first and greatest commandment that the Lord has given us bids us love him with our whole heart. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart. From Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. As God has loved us with an infinite love, he desires that we should love him sincerely, and he longs to possess our whole heart. Son, give me thy heart. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee, but that thou fear the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways, and love him, and serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul? From Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. In the old law, God commanded that fire be constantly burning on the altar. This altar, says St. Gregory, is a type of our heart in which the fire of divine love must ever burn. Therefore, to the command to love him with the whole heart, God added this injunction, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt meditate upon them sitting in thy house and walking on thy journey, 
sleeping and rising, and thou shalt bind them as a sign on thy hand, and thy shall and they shall be and shall move between thy eyes, and thou shalt write them in the entry and on the doors of thy house. This is in Deuteronomy chapter six, verses six through nine. In order to be continually mindful of them, and make thy life com conformable to them. As a reward for this love, God promises to give us himself. I am thy protector and thy reward exceedingly great. The princes of this world reward their faithful subjects with possession, honors, and privileges. The Lord gives them who love him nothing less than himself. We should certainly be amply rewarded by the knowledge that God loves those who love him, as he says in so many passages of Holy Writ, I love them that love me. He that abideth in charity abideth in God and God in him. He that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him. If we knew that in some distant country there lived a handsome, holy, learned, and compassionate prince, we could not refrain from loving him, even though he had done us no good whatsoever. But what are all the excellent qualities of such a prince compared to those of our God? God possesses every perfection in an infinite degree. He possesses everything that makes him worthy of our love. Could he have offered a greater, better, nobler, richer, or more amiable object for our love than himself? Who is of higher nobility than God? Illustrious people are proud of the fact that their nobility goes back 500 or 1,000 years. The nobility of God is from all eternity. Who is greater than God? He is the Lord of all. The angels of heaven and the powerful on earth are to him as a drop in the mighty ocean or as a miserable grain of dust. A single word from him brought the world into being. A single word could consign everything to oblivion. Who is richer than God? He possesses the treasures of heaven and earth. Who is more beautiful than God? The beauty of all creatures vanishes before the glory of God. Who is more beneficent than God? St. Augustine says that the efforts of God to bestow favors on us are greater even than our desire to receive them. Who is more merciful than God? As soon as a sinner, though it be the most abandoned wretch on earth, humbles himself before God and repents of his sins, God pardons him and receives him back. Who is more grateful than God? He never permits anything we do for love of him to go unrewarded. In fine, who is more amiable and deserving of love than God? His very face fills the saints of heaven with a delight that constitutes their perfect happiness for all eternity. On the contrary, the greatest suffering of the reprobate consists in their knowing and seeing the lovable nature of God without being able to love him. We must therefore love God from our heart because he is worthy of all love. On account of the love God bears us, he is deserving of our sincerest gratitude. If we could unite the love of all men and angels and saints in one heart, this united love could not compare with the least degree of the love God bears each single soul. St. John Chrysostom says that God loves us more than we can love ourselves. I have loved thee with an everlasting love says God to each one of us. Those who loved us first on earth were our parents, but they began to love us only when they began to know us. God, on the contrary, loved us before we had an existence. Even before our parents lived, God loved us. Yes, even before the creation of the world. In a word, he has loved us as long as he is God, and that is from all eternity. That heroic virgin, St. Agnes, was right when she said to those who sought to win her affections, Another lover has come before you. O world and creatures of the world, I cannot love you. For as God has loved me first, it is no more than right that I should give and consecrate to him my heart. And that should be our resolution for today. To give and consecrate to God our heart in full for all the many reasons that St. Alphonsus just gave us for who God is and how it is that we should love him and why we should love him, but primarily is because he loved us first. So let us give 
and consecrate to God our heart today and try to love him with a perfect love the best that we can. I'll see you all tomorrow. Know my continued prayers for you. God bless.